Hi, welcome to Sanctus Library. I will be showing you all the different features and how to use them. There's currently more than uh, 240 materials and every month I add new materials to the list. You can simply assign the materials to the object by selecting the object, changing the another material, apply material. It's just as simple as that. There's also a bake feature, simplified way of baking the materials. To install the other, we go to Edit, Preferences, Install. You go to the folder where you downloaded the file. You select the, the zip file, Install Add-on. You will see this. You have to activate it here. This will install something to make the, the thumbnails load faster. You only have to do it once. As you can see, we have the panel of the add-on here. If you don't want to have this tab here, because maybe you have a, a lot of them, you can deactivate it here. And you can instead use a floating menu. You can select the shortcut here that you want, that you prefer. And now when you select an object, you use that shortcut and you will have the add-on as a floating uh, menu. To make it easier for the video, I will just leave it like this. We also have on the shading tab, here you have the uh, shader tools. These are to create materials or, or add details to them. We will see it a bit later. And here we have the baking tool that we are going to see a bit later too. We also have a button here where you, you can see the new materials, you can see uh, the documentation and everything related to the add-on. It will be also here and on this panel too. The panel has the categories here. Once you select a category, you have all the materials listed on that category. You select the one that you want and then select a material and apply the material. If the material already exists, because you already added, let's say you want to add the same material to another object, you apply the material and you can choose this option here and that will use the one that it's already on the blend file. They will have the same. If you want another copy, you can apply the material, reimport asset, and you have a different copy of the material there. If, you, if this is empty and you, you can't find the group, you can always uh, press the home key and it will center the view. Now let's say we change the, the size of the tiles there. For example, we will make it 0 0.4 on X. We change the color and then we don't like what we did. Uh, we can always apply the material again and use reimport asset and it will be a new copy of the material. You will also notice these icons here. Uh, I did this to differentiate uh, the materials that were made for Cycles or EV, how complex they are and if they need displacement. So the way you read this is if it has a letter there, in this case C means Cycles, you have some materials that don't have any letter, that means it's compatible with both. And there are some materials that use, in this case, for example, EV. The color of the band, you have green, yellow, and red. And it's an indicator of how demanding or how complex the material is. And when you see this uh, zigzag pattern, that means the material requires displacement to look correctly. One of the things that I want to make very clear is that EV is very slow with materials that are a bit too complex, especially if they have bump or displacement. So if you use a material uh, for cycles using EV or material preview that even if you have cycles selected, it's still EV. As you can see here, my viewport is extremely slow. If I switch to cycles, it works just fine. And the same goes if I change this to EV in render view, it will be uh, also slow. So never forget to use cycles if you're using a cycles material and never use material preview on a cycles material because it will get super slow.
if you want to use materials uh, with displacement or are a bit uh, heavy or for cycles in EV, we will use the weight and we will see that in a moment. The way displacement works is by displacing vertices. So if you don't have vertices, this won't look like this. Let's deactivate the subdivision. I have ad adaptive subdivision here. And as you can see, this is completely flat. If I give the mesh enough resolution, we get this. In some cases, maybe you want to use bump instead of displacement. And what is plugged here can be used as displacement or bump, depending on what you're doing. It will look way better like this because it's real displacement. Bump emulates displacement. For example, I will use this material here. Since this height is lower, we can maybe get away with the, with the bump. So what we are going to do is go to the material settings, settings, and instead of using displacement only, we will go to bump only. And as you can see, we have bump there. But if we use a material like this one, for example, and we change this to bump, it will look OK. It's not the same. And if you look it from the side, uh, it won't work. But maybe you want to use it like that. So you have that option here. If you want, again, if you want to use displacement on EV, we can always break the material and use the height map uh, on a displace modifier. I will show you in a moment and you will be able to use displacement on EV too. Next, we will see how we can bake the materials. Here we have all the different settings from the material. And here we have the outputs that are there for baking. These are basically the last connections that go to the principal shader inside this group. And we will use them to uh, bake our material. I will turn this off. We will just select the node we want, right click. And here you will have the option to select the sockets that we are going to bake. In this case, we have displacement, but this is just the one that we are connecting here. So we don't want to bake that. We have instead the height here. This is connected to a displacement node inside this group node. So I will check color, roughness, and height. OK, I have this here. I will do a, a low resolution bake just to explain how this works. So we hit bake. Once the baking is done, we can see the results here. You can always click on these thumbnails here to uh, see the maps. And you can also save them here. We will save the color. Here we have the settings. If you want to change anything, in this case, we want uh, the color space will be automatically set to sRGB. We save this image. Then we have the roughness on linear. And then we have the height, also linear. Once we have all the maps saved, move this a bit. We have a principal shader here. And if you have Node Wrangler enabled, it will be easier. I will hide this to make it more clear. If you have Node Wrangler uh, activated, you can Control Shift D, select all your maps, and press this here, and it will create the material for you. You can also do it manually. We will change the color here to sRGB. We will try this. This is the procedural material, and let's change the shader and the displacement. This we have to this mid level on at zero. And as you can see, we have the same result, but a lot faster. And this way you can add multiple uh, materials to your scene without uh, making your viewport look uh, laggy or slow. You can use it also to export the materials to other software like Unreal Engine or whatever you, you use. If you want to use a uh, displacement material in Eevee, what you have to do is remove this from here. We will use this, everything the same, but we will use the height map here on a displace modifier. Let's change to Eevee. Since we are using maps instead of a procedural material, this is fast, as you can see. And for the displacement, that in the case of uh, Eevee, this will work as a bump. You can use it like this if you want, but you can also use displacement if you Disconnect this, go to the modifiers, displays, put this to zero. Here we will add a new texture, change this to UV, select your UV map. Now we go to this tab here, we open the height map, 
we will change the mapping to extend. And in colors, we will remove the clamp. So if we have values that go outside the 0 to 1 range, they will count, for example, a negative value. Uh, if we have the clamp, it will clamp at 0. If we unclamp it, it will go be, uh, below 0. And the last thing we need to do is give this plane enough resolution to use the displacement, because so far it's just uh, a plane. OK, so in this case, we go to Edit Mode, select everything, right click, subdivide, and we can subdivide it like this. And as we increase the subdivisions, as you can see, we have the height map on EV2. And this is EV. You have to set the render to the same value. We can change this to Shade Smooth. And we have displacement and super fast viewport with EV on our displaced material. When you are in the shader editor, you have the tools here. This is the baking. And here there's a lot of tools that I use to create the materials. And as I, I create more materials, I keep adding tools here. Uh, I will make tutorials about how you can use them. It's not like this is necessary for the other, but if you want to use them, they are there. This is the base for anything that uses tiles, bricks, or something like that. This is advanced. If you are new to Blender or something, this will be probably uh, don't have use to you. Here we can see this is the height. And here we have different uh, things that we can use. This is random per tile, different kinds of UVs, and a tile mask that will show you just what's bricks and what is mortar. If we increase this, you can see it there. Round corners. And well, a lot of different uh, options. And I will use the height for now here and the displacement here. We have to go to the material properties and set the displacement here to displacement only. And we will change the profile, the bevel. Now if we, for example, go to a smart mask, this is uh, to break tiles, tile slicer, add group, bring port. And I will use the height here, the random per tile. Here we need the UV coordinates. And I will use center tile coordinates, center tile UV. And now we have a resulting height here. So we can use instead of this, we use this. Now we can see how, how some of the tiles are, are broken there. You can also use the tile cracks. Again, you use the resulting height and the height. Shifted tile vector is this one. I have to match the names and random per tile random per tile and now we have our resulting height and as you can see you, you have the basically the height of this material ready with cracks and broken tiles and there's a lot of different things textures and patterns and things you can use in different situations once you buy the full version of the add-on, you have uh, access to the updates with new materials every month. You can also download the free version on Blender Market that has uh, 32 materials. If you need any help or you have any questions, you can uh, leave a comment or join the Discord. You can also follow me on Twitter where I share the new materials and everything about the add-on. And also you can check my tutorials on my YouTube channels. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.